Okay, so this um, short video is going to show you how to bookmark in Diego and how to set up your own groups in Diego. Okay, so this um, bookmark assumes that you have set up your account and logged in, and you'll know you're logged in because your little profile will be over here. Um, also, you should have already set up a little Diego um, Digalette in your toolbar so that you'll be able to bookmark directly from wherever you are on the web. Okay, so I'm going to open up a new browser window and I'm going to go to Google. So let's say I want to look at flipping the classroom. Okay, and then I'm going to click on flip the classroom, turning the traditional classroom on its head. And this is kind of a cool infographic about the flipped classroom. So I'm going to bookmark that. So I click on my little digalette. I say bookmark this page. It automatically pulls in the address for you. It gives the title. If you wanted this to be private and not visible by anyone else, you could click the little private box. You can add a description. You can add tags. So I've already used these tags a few times, so it's recommending tags for me. Okay. And then I can say add share to a group and I'm going to add it into my flipping the classroom resources. So I'm going to save. So now if I go to my library and I go to my groups and I go to my flipping the classroom resources, there it is, the flipped classroom turning the, the traditional classroom on its head. So now I've bookmarked this page into a folder where I'll be able to find it because I've organized it by topic. And it's also bookmarked through Diego, not through my Firefox bookmarks, which means that it's available online. So every time I log into Diego, I will have access to those bookmarks, unlike the bookmarks that are on your stored on your computer in Firefox. So in Firefox, when you bookmark something, it's on that computer, not on Firefox. So if you would go to a lab computer and try to access your bookmarks, you won't be able to do that. But in Diego, you'll be able to do that. Okay. Um, another neat thing that this allows you to do is to link to other Diego bookmarks. So you can um, go back to your My Library, and then oh, you can search within your library if you want or you can pull up a browser window. So I'm going to show you how to link to some information in my groups. So in the course, I put these two, um, these two groups, Teaching and Learning Journals and Education Literature Resources. So if I click on Teaching and Learning Resources, and let's say I come down to um, So let's do college teaching. Then I can go in here and I can look at articles that are here and I can search. So let's say physics. And this will pull up some information about physics. So here's an assignment-driven course, a task-specific approach to teaching. So this might be an interesting strategy for you to take a look at. And then you can link to this page. Or you can, I'm looking for where the article is. Here it is. So I can pull that up and I can download that directly. So that way um, you'll have access to this Journal of Excellence in College Teaching because I have added it to my little um, Diego group on journals. So I'm going to go to another one. Let me go back to my groups again. Okay, and I'm going to go to Education Literature Resources. And I'm going to come down to ERC, which is a great database. So let's do Physics Teaching. 
and then you'll see all of these. So I could just bookmark this whole page because this is a search for physics teaching. I might want to come back to this, so I could say bookmark this page. So it's going to take me to the physics teaching search that I did within Eric, and I could say um, physics as my tags and teaching. And then I can share this, and I could say, let's put it in my STEM teaching group. But look at this great resource, Active Learning Strategies in Physics. So this would be um, a great research that might introduce you to some learning strategies. There's case studies, questionnaires. Um, you could download the full text, but I could also bookmark this page. So Diego knows what page I'm on. It gives me the URL. It gives me the title. I could change the title if I wanted to. I can add Active Learning and physics, and I can share it to my STEM group. So it is kind of easier if you set up your groups ahead of time so that you can just add them directly to your group as you're finding them online. Okay, So that's how you bookmark. Um, you can also bookmark directly into databases. So here's an example of a library database. And I am off campus. I'm not logged in. So if I click on the PsycInfo database, Oh, so I guess it knows I'm, I guess I must have clicked this already so it knows I'm online and I could search here. So I could say um, learning in the sciences. Oh, and I guess if I spelled it right, that would be really helpful, wouldn't it? So maybe I might want to look at Next Generation Environments for Accessing and Promoting Complex Science Learning. That sounds kind of interesting. So what I would do is I would bookmark this page because this would take me to this page, which then I could directly download my PDF. But I also might want to have access to the abstract and other information. Um, science. And I'm going to share to my STEM teaching group. Okay, so that shows you how to bookmark. So now if we go back to Diego and I go to my groups and I go to my STEM teaching, it should show me all of those. Here it is, Next Generation Environments, Active Learning Strategies. So if I click on that, it takes me back to this art page and then I can download. So it is very cool that now I have things organized and I have them on the web that I can access them from anywhere and add to my groups and my library whenever I would like to. Okay, now how do you set up a group? To set up a group, you're going to create a group. So I'm going to call this one, um, I'm going to call this one information literacy resources. Okay, and I'm going to say it's public. I'm going to list this group in the search results. I'm going to make it open to anyone that wants to join, and I'm going to say only I can add people. Now, I do have to do this horrible little capture thing when you set up new groups so that it knows that it's you and not some computer that's trying to do this. Create my group. Oh, the group name is already taken. So I, that means I might want to go out and look at um, information literacy resources online to see what's already available there. So let me call this IL resources. Maybe that won't be taken. To do this horrible little thing again. Are you NPT? Capture R. So my group was created. So now if I go to my groups, I should see IL resources. So now I can start adding resources into my IL resources folder. So I would like you to set up a group and create a group 
for your course, the topic of your course, or strategies that you want to look for about teaching your course, or set up your own flipping the classroom folder, and then you can copy my whole flipping the classroom resources. So like for example, um, I have all these resources already set up here. So if you wanted to link to them, you could just open to this page and bookmark and you would get my entire list of flipping the classroom resources. You wouldn't have to do them individually one at a time. So that gives you a little introduction to how to bookmark. You're always going to go back to my groups to set up to create a new group. And then once you come back to this one level of my groups or my library, then you can look at whatever's in your library. You can look at whatever is in your groups. Okay, and this is where you're going to create a group. So hopefully this tutorial will help. If not, let me know and I'd be glad to help you walk through the process of um, setting up a um, folder. Okay.